I didn't think I'd be around yet, or still. I did a last well in Testament, I had a lot of death threats. Slash tires, cut brakes, got hit over the head once. Bulls taken out of my motorcycle wheel before I testified under oath. I didn't think I'd be around, and, you know, I just was getting things prepared so history could use my videos. I've been waiting for Standing Rock for a long time, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for these people to wake up, to understand what I, what I saw. See, the thing is, people just don't understand until it happens. And, and I saw it, I lived through it. I lived on the river. I was a union member, I worked on the river. I seen the devastation. And, and I'm a Navy veteran, Bronze Star, you know, I fought for my country. Just because I don't get a paycheck from the government anymore doesn't mean that I'm not fighting for the people in my country now. People are dying. If I would have just shut my mouth and documented the oil spill and waited two years and they were gone, I would have got 10% of the cleanup after that, which was 600 million, I would have got 60 million. I would be so rich. I could do anything I want for the rest of my life. But then I would die and I would probably go to hell because I would know those kids got cancer because of me. Maybe I can't help every single person, but maybe I saved 100 lives. Or maybe they lived an extra 30 years. And so I'm just trying to get the word out. And people, there's so there's a, at least probably a thousand people that are here because of my videos. I've had hundreds of people come up to me saying, I am here, John, because I saw your videos and it was it moved me. And this is a revolution. Forty miles of dead fish in the river I just can't turn a blinded eye I see the people out there dying And they don't know the reason why Retaliation's getting bolder Got me looking over my shoulder They never ever roll me over I was born to be the whistleblower Just like a suitman I will not be born I come at you with everything that I got From Kalamazoo all the way to Standing Rock I'm ashamed the way they betray us We can't stand idle anymore they're attacking exactly what we are There's blackened waves upon the shore I stand me deep in northern tar Retaliation's getting bolder Got me looking over my shoulder They'll never ever roll me over I was born to be the whistleblower New tonight, West Michigan's oil spill is bigger than first thought. Originally, Enbridge told us that 819,000 gallons of oil spilled into the Kalamazoo River. Today, the EPA said 1.1 million gallons has been cleaned up, and there's still more out there. You may remember EPA gave Enbridge an end of the summer deadline to get all of the oil cleaned up. Not only did Enbridge miss that deadline, we just found out today the EPA has found new pockets of oil that was kind of hiding along the river, if you will, 200 acres worth. Now we did the math. That's 150 full length football fields of oil they didn't know was here. The Kalamazoo River, miles downstream from where the leak occurred and there's still signs of oil. This place is full of oil. Monday, John Bolenbaugh told us of numerous problem areas. He's documented them on Facebook. Bolenbaugh started taking pictures and shooting video and shared his concerns with bosses. He told me um, if I ever take another video or picture or go to the press, I would be fired. A short time later, he was fired. As a result, rather than thanking him, 
they in fact violated the law by retaliating against him via termination of his employment. Tonight, our I team takes on accusations of an Embridge cover up. Last July, a pipeline owned by Embridge ruptured in Marshall, sending hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil into West Michigan's waterways. Now, a former Enbridge employee is blowing the whistle on the company, accusing it of covering up oil. Tonight, he takes us to some of those areas he claims are still soaking in the mess. News Channel 3's Aaron Baskerville takes the whistleblower's concerns to Enbridge, and he's live now in the studio with this cleanup controversy. Aaron. One former worker is doing everything possible to get his story out there. They were trying to meet deadlines, so what they would tell us to do is take dirt, put it over the top of the oil. They were telling us to take mud with uh, oil and throw it into the woods. They were telling us to rake dirt over the top of oil. And he says because he wouldn't do those things, he was fired in October after two months on cleanup operations. But Bolenbaugh believes the so-called smoking gun is near Tomage Creek in Ground Zero in Marshall. Because I just wanted to prove that this is, ugh, ugh, this is all oil. It is all oil. This is not mud. Mud will freeze. But they put this canvas over the top of it. This is just plain old canvas. They put grass seed underneath it. And it, what is supposed to happen is the grass will grow through. No, that is not oil. That, that's sediment. And that's what he's standing in is mud. I don't like being out here. I hate winter. I think I might go to Florida for a minute, visit the family. This is not fun. All right? I am doing this because nobody else will. And what I mean by that is EPA has hundreds of guys working, or they have had hundreds of guys working, and they're not out here telling them to do this. Why do I have to do this? Embridge says I can't come on their property. They're going to arrest me. This is why they don't want me on their property, because I will expose the oil that they're leaving. The only way I'm going to get people's attention is to do this. I think this if you were a kid, think if you were a kid playing right now and you fell in that, a little kid out here by yourself, you'd be done. You'd be, you'd be stuck and you'd die. Rocks. All under this entire thing, they put all these rocks, trying to cover up the oil. Now, how much oil is under those rocks? We don't even know that. This is just what comes to the surface. What is under the rocks? You can't. It's hard to dig. And they know that. It's a technique they use to cover up oil. All right, so you see how this all bounces right all in here? Can you see that? Yeah. The whole thing, it's all oil. This is just canvas. See this? They put this over this entire area. It's all canvas. They plant grass underneath of it. The grass will pop through. This is all oil, okay? Can you see how deep I am? My whole leg is buried. It's not easy to get out, but this grass is covering it up for you. All right? I'm just telling you, it's here. It's gonna get in your wells. This is the truth. These companies are evil. And what I mean by evil is you do not do this in my community. Ain't gonna happen, even if I'm dead. It's October 9th. I just showed you the coordinates. We're at Talmadge Creek, and I'm gonna just show you that they put sand over the top of the oil. Can you see how clear it is? You can see right down to the bottom, looks really clear. I'm gonna take some sand. I'm gonna show you real close up. This is sand, all right? See, there's no sheen. Reason why that's important is because when I dig down, the oil is underneath the sand.
See it coming up? It's under the sand. It's yeah, not in the sand. It's under the sand that they put there in massive amounts. Wow. That's disgusting. It's John Bowling Ball again. This place is full of oil. You have to watch this video. You have to show everybody this video. This is one of my first videos where I said I was a loss for words. I told them a long time ago there was oil in here. Months. I mean, this was back in October. I told them exactly where it was. They have not cleaned it. It's all through here. It's December 12th. I just broke a hole through this ice right here. This is all ice. And underneath this ice is sick, toxic oil. Just massive amounts of it. Um, it's, it's super bad. And the reason why I came to this area is because I knew it was here because they told us not to clean it. So, I just got a little bit of smudge on my glove, just showing you. I mean, I, I keep doing this over and over, it's, it's all here. This place is just full of oil. Yep, that's gonna get in your kids' bodies after they eat venison from this area. It's all Embridge's fault. From investigation, they knew about it two years ahead of time that the pipe was going bad. They didn't do nothing about it. I just stirred it up. I'm going to try to grab some chunks of oil. Wow, your hand's already covered. I can see it from here. Hold, on, hold your hand still. What I'm doing right now is I'm gonna show you that this is really oil. I'm gonna stick mud in my glove. All right? But when you rinse it off, only oil will stick. May 20th, 2013. This area is just full of oil. That's why EPA is making Enbridge redredge this because kids are swallowing drops of this oil and the MSDS sheet specifically says it can kill you, cause seizures, coma, liver damage, kidney damage, on and on. Leukemia, cancer. Do you want your fish to have this? Do you want your kids to have this in their body? Or the deer, rabbits, squirrels, anything that you may eat, is gonna, this is gonna be in their body. You think that's clean? You, no, you stink like oil too. It, like it's, it reeks of oil as makes, soon as you walked out of there. Makes you wanna puke. Submerged oil recovery. It says Ceresco Dam, Morrow Lake, cleanup, 100%. Inspection sign off 100%. And this is on 10 24 2010. Well, well over a year from my videos. It's sickening. I mean, this is this is actual proof. This is Enbridge documents that was sent to the EPA. 100% proof. And we know now that they've lied because Ceresco Dam, after my complaints, they went and redug up. And it took them almost a year to get where they're at now, and it's still full of oil. And Morrow Lake's the same way. How much more proof do you need? The, the oil and gas industry, the dishonesty that these people uh, possess and the, and the things that they do that are detrimental to communities is almost beyond belief. And they have no 
compassion whatsoever. They have no honesty. They have no pride. And they, uh, they're worried about the bottom line. The bottom line is the bottom line. So they told you to cover up the oil. Yeah. They didn't tell you to clean it up. They told you to cover it up, plant grass over it. Yes. This is a crime. This is a crime against nature. It's a crime against humanity. No amount of oil is worth it. We can't risk our land and water for this. We can't do that. And I'm going to do everything I can to stop that from happening. Thank you. I, I'm just stunned by what you've shown us, John. The cover-up is beyond reality. How they can consciously do this is beyond imagination. It's unconscionable. We as citizens need to rise up and expose this. And I'll pledge like my friends Ben and Dave that this will get out to the public. Any chance we have, we will talk to the press about what we've seen here. John, you're doing a wonderful job. Keep it up. God bless you. Keep, don't give up. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. It's uh, December 25th, 2013. Uh, sorry I'm shaking. It's kind of cold out here. But this is what I'm doing for Christmas. I'm in Galesburg, Michigan. And uh, we had the 2010 oil spill by Enbridge. Um, well over a million gallons. They didn't clean it up properly and it flooded, went into the swamps. We're nearly 40 miles away from the, where the spill was. And look how bad it is. And this is four years later. All right, check that. There is none on this side. Somebody took them out. I talked to the motorcycle guy, um, and he said those will not vibrate out, uh, especially both of them. And somebody's trying to kill me. You drew a line in the sand against a very big enemy. You're the Alamo up against the Mexican army. Now, hopefully you don't have the same outcome. But you also can't undo what you started. You can't walk away from it. It's not like you can quit halfway into the game. Former contracted cleanup worker John Bolenbaugh said he was harassed by Enbridge workers. That's after he started accusing Enbridge, he said, of instructing contractors to cover up spilled oil with grass and debris. He was fired and won a wrongful termination settlement against SET Environmental. Now he's going after Enbridge. We asked a Cooley law expert to take a look at his legal claims. I am videotaping. John Bolenball calls himself a whistleblower and began documenting incidents. He claims he was blocked in by Enbridge workers and harassed on a regular basis and assaulted. Guy hit over the head. He says he's also documented an alleged confrontation at Firekeeper's Casino in Battle Creek. If you touch it, I'm going to give you a recipe for assault. He claims death threats were left on his car and tires slashed. I've had all four of my tires slashed. He was also arrested for trespassing, saying an Enbridge employee called the cops. Were you given permission to be under work? Yes. However, that trespassing case never moved forward. They did not show up to court. And so, did the judge say you were legally on the property then? Um, we didn't even talk to a judge. Uh, the prosecutor actually dropped it. And he says this former security guard can back up his claims. Garrett Murray says this flyer was posted on the walls, showing Bolenbaugh's picture and stats, even his license plate number, saying all personnel be alert. I just didn't think it was right that they had all this information. He claimed when Bolenbaugh was on public property, workers would approach him. They decided to drop what they were doing and started go heading towards him. Do you think that the company was harassing him or do you think it was rogue individuals? I believe it had to stem from the company. John Bolenball was, wasn't such a threat to the situation. Why did they have the, the main head honcho of uh, Enbridge come from Canada down after this was exposed? They were, you know, t physically attacking you in the woods. You know, that's why I started coming out with you because I was, I literally was worried about your safety. They're probably, they're gonna take pictures, they're gonna try to arrest me. Um, gonna say I'm on their property, but that's all right with me. Um, I'm doing the right thing for my community, so if they wanna throw me in jail for protecting my community. Oh, this is odd, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they really are here for us, huh? Yeah. Now, does it make any sense to you 
that if a company is not covering up oil or leaving oil that it's not supposed to, does it make any sense to send an entire helicopter with a crew that costs thousands and thousands of dollars, plus they got three trucks up here waiting for us, they sent a boat out, you're talking about probably $10,000 they spent today to come and find me because I am videotaping areas that have oil left in it. Does that make any logical sense? Unless there's a cover up. They're gonna do this to your community too. So, but you see uh, right here, right next to a red marker on the tree, EPA knows that it's here. They documented that it's here. And Enbridge came through here with workers. They see this flag and they still don't clean it up. Underneath, this is all oil. This, all this black is oil. It's all oil. All through here, this whole area. Yeah, it's really, my hands were, my hands are decently clean. It's really sticky. After a while it dries and it's not so bad, but I mean, it's still all oil. So the animal eats that. Wow. wow. See, right there, that's, that's thick oil. We're just, uh, these are reporters from New York, okay. from different parts of the country. They came here. You're not recording me, correct? I am recording you. You need to turn that off. No, Why? he don't. By law, he don't. No, he, he don't. By law, you don't. By law. I, no, I, I know what I, I know my rights. You don't, He's a reporter. If you me. want to make him look bad, I'm, I'm or you look bad, you, he has I'm a right. To, yeah. Okay. All right. You guys make me sick. Do not record me without my permission. We can, no, we can. Am, By I'm law, we can. Here. We're not going to get into an argument, though. I'll tell you that. I, I'm tired of the threats from these guys. I understand. I'm tired listen, of your threats. Stop pointing, okay? Listen, we're not going to get into an argument out here about this, okay? You guys just spent 10 grand listen, for a listen, helicopter, listen, and all you guys are stand here to listen, arrest somebody listen, that's listen, helping my community. Listen, 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 listen. I have a right to show oil covered up. I have a right. Yes, sir. Do you understand what's been going on here? It's, I think it's important that the whole world it sees is. what they're doing. It is important. All right. If the EPA EPA's is not paying attention, right. if the FBI is not paying attention, if the president's not paying attention, if the you county commissioners aren't it. paying attention, the Emmett Township Department of Public <laughs> Safety can't help you I know, but when it's it comes wrong. to that. It's still wrong. What seems to be the problem? My name is Stuart Coates. Yeah. Hambridge Safety. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm just doing fine. I'll be glad to talk to you. Any questions as long as he's not filming? Oh, uh, he's going to film, and right now you guys don't have any permission to be on this property. Our attorney told you guys to stay off. Well, I think you're, you know, you're gutsy. You're really hanging it out there in your own community. You've, you've been through uh, quite a bit just to tell people what's going on and you're making some very powerful people very angry. Um, at great personal risk to yourself. Um, <clears throat> I think you believe in what you're doing and you're trying to help your community so I commend you for that. I'm fighting back tears right now. You have no idea how upsetting this is. I did not want to come here and talk about this today. Darn them for what they put me through and the, and the other workers, you know? Because seriously, if, this, if, if somebody like him wasn't out there doing what he did, they would have been gone the first year, maybe the two years. This was not a plan that was going to go on this long. They were forced to come back and do more. You're talking about the him being Mr. Bowen. Mr. Bowen Ball. My question earlier, though, was I understand that you're... But seriously, we all should have. Most of the people... And John, John, at one point when we were out there, he looked at me when, when, when that guy said what he said. He goes, Kevin, you live here, too. You're going to tell me that this doesn't... I said, yeah, it bothers me, but I may... I said, I don't know, John. I don't know what to say. I was out... That was an emotional stress for me. What do I do? Do I do the right thing, or do I make that money I need to make to take care of bills and family and stuff? It was like, what was the point of us even being out there? Oh, I know, to make $22 an hour. How much, and you know, and, and be honest with you, if I had to do all over again, I would have quit. I wouldn't have won any part of this. Because I, I, could, I could imagine, because John would dug into this deeper. And I know this goes on all the time. This is just big money, big corporation. You know, this ain't the first place that's ever happened. But this is my hometown. Move to strike all the testimony that violates the court's orders. 
Right. Well, we were talking about emotional, right? Emotional yeah, right. stress. That's, yeah, I'm emotionally stressed. I, I can't even imagine what he's been through out there trying to get all this out to the public and and not and not turning his back on it like a lot of us did. Move you're, to strike testimony. You're talking about him being John Bolenball. John Bolenball. I'm sorry, I think we need John Bolenballs in this world because obviously Kevin Jacobs didn't step up and I live here and there's a whole bunch of other people that worked on this river crew that lives here. And it's sad that we all did the same thing that Embridge is doing. It's all about the dollar. People think they can sweep it under the rug, you know. Eventually, everybody's going to get sure enough sick around here, you know. And the rich get richer and the poor get sicker and poor. So, I need to stop. So, that's why you see me standing here today. I have kids myself, you know, and I don't feel this right at all. You well, know, even kids that's not mine here, it's a hurting feeling to see kids on videos as sick because somebody's greedy, you know. In our own country, you know, it's wrong. It's, I don't know what's going on around here, but it needs to stop. You know, they're raping the land and then polluting the land, and it's, it's going to be, no one's going to want to live around here. They don't now, you know, but it's going to get worse. And you've got animals walking around here, and they're going to start disappear, disappearing too. So, so you're risking your whole career yep. by doing this video today to show me where oil was buried. Yes, yes, yeah, and I believe it's worth it, you know. I might be saving a life down the road, or a family down the road in the future, you know? Well, put price on life. How did you hear about me? Well, I, I saw, uh, saw your video. I seen the uh, image oil, you know, and seen, seen some of your videos, and I told my roommate, hey, I want to meet this guy. I got something to show him. So that's why I'm here. And so I meet you, and I'm bringing you out here, and we're going to find some oil. You know, just need to stop, you know? Do you think what I'm doing is the right thing? Yes, I was. Yeah, I had tears in my eyes actually, and I saw this guy. I said, "Man, I gotta see this guy. Let him know to keep doing what he's doing and shake his hand, and you know, let him know he's doing the right thing." You know, I got, got kind of upset about that, so I figured I'd better come out here and see you. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Well, I would like to say that I worked on this site up until about this point here, from there to here. All right. And once I mentioned something about the oil. That was my last day, and the crew continued on without me and finished this site out. Approximately in here is a two inch dig. There might be four inches on top, so we'll get four inches down, and then we'll be to what they left behind. All right, let's see what you find. All right. Do you see the oil that they buried? Massive amounts underneath all this dirt. Bradley just dug down about a foot and a half. I mean, my whole hand reaches in here, everybody. Okay, that's how deep it is. Okay, my fingers are down there, so I reached all the way in. screwed up. They screwed up bad. When they look at me Rob. caring. They stopped caring about people. They stopped caring about people. I can't do it. Tell me what you think about Embridge, Rob. Get it out. This is your opportunity to tell them what you think. This is your community. This is a piss poor company. They should care about more about people than oil. They should care about their environment that they're living in. Do you want to drink oil for your coffee? Do you want to drink and eat what you produce? Money ain't everything. Well, we started out at uh, doing uh, submerged oil recovery, which when we started out, it seemed pretty thorough. It slowly became <clears throat> where it was a more of a look good on paper type show to where, you know, like I had seen in earlier recordings where they were talking about changing out booms. But I think the real reason for changing out the, the white booms when they got dirty was because we got a call ahead of time saying, hey, there's a helicopter coming over with maybe EPA or 
you know, somebody that's in direct contact with the cleanup efforts, they want to see it look good, so therefore we had to hurry up and bust butt and change out all this boom so it's all sh nice and shiny white. So they said, oh look, they, they got all that cleaned up, now we can move on to section blah blah blah. Which in, in fact, the sections we were working on in that area, to, to my knowledge, wasn't totally thoroughly clean. I mean, there's submerged oil all over the place and we got to areas later on that it was pretty much just blow through it, put your wands in the water, shake the water up, make it look like you're doing something, we can write it down on paper and then you know we'll move on to the next section. Well, all the employees kind of, we kind of looked at each other like, we just got here and oh, there's definitely oil here and we've turned it up and it was about 12 foot of water so I mean it was kind of tough getting at it because the weather was getting a little colder too, it started to get more dense and it didn't want to float as easy. So, I mean, you had to work it real good to get it up, but we all knew there was more there, but I mean, like I said, it was, it was more of a make it look good on paper, like we're knocking these areas out real fast, you know, I mean, we're getting them cleaned out so they can write it down, look, we got this section, this section, this section done, so everybody thinks, you know, we're doing such a swell job out there, and, but in reality, it, it wasn't, it was just a skim over, that's all it was, it was just a, a horse and pony skim over, and. You just mentioned about another reason why you didn't report the oil cover up when when I did. Why didn't you? Well, you know, at the time, obviously, I needed my job. I was still working, but I had also heard, you know, about death threats and stuff being made, and wasn't so much just to protect myself, but you know, I have kids that, if for some reason because I spoke up, they decide they want to make my ass disappear, then my kids lose their father. So that's the only reason I didn't. Well, isn't that like in the movies? I mean, all that's all a conspiracy and made up stuff? Or do you believe that could really happen? Oh, I know it could happen. And why do you believe that? You know, it's uh, the old saying, squeaky wheel gets the grease. Well, in this case, they would just make the squeaky wheel disappear instead of fixing it. Do you believe I'm a squeaky wheel for Embridge? You're more than a squeaky wheel. You're a... Uh, locomotive that just won't go away in their eyes. Really? I, you got balls. <laughs> Why do I have balls? To take somebody on that day. In Battle Creek they spilled it big For nearly a week they let it flow All on account of the drilling rig From door to door I let them know Retaliations I just can't believe that is going through my property. I just, I am so glad John's got, you know, somebody is doing something about this. I, it just makes me ill. I had to push her in front of the camera. <laughs> she, did. <laughs> she didn't want to do this. What's going to happen to you? Who knows? Hopefully I'm in heaven. <laughs> yeah, you will because the Embridge will have you killed by then. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't say that. <laughs> What is your name? My name is Ann Gregory. Can you speak up, please? My name is Ann Gregory. All right, and um, you mentioned that you were sick from the yes, oil spill? When the oil spill come through that morning, I was deathly sick. I was lightheaded, dizzy, sick at my stomach, throwing up, vomiting, having diarrhea, and that went on for about two weeks. And finally, uh, Bill, uh, my friend here, come back from Florida, and he said, you're going to the hospital. said, you can't go on. Like, I didn't know what was making me sick. I just thought, I don't know what's making me sick. I've never been like this before. And when I went into the hospital, I said, I don't know what it is, but I, all I know is I've smelled those fumes from the river. It was raw, crude oil. It was the horriblest smell you ever smelled in your life. No. So Embridge never um, um, evacuated you? No. Did they ever try to evacuate you? No, they said if I go outdoors to stay out. No more than five minutes. When did they evacuate you? How long did you sit in those toxic fumes? Uh, we were probably there about a week before we finally got evacuated. So you were there for an entire week breathing in these horrible chemicals, and then finally they said, okay, we'll give you a hotel room. Yes. Well, um, you just talked to or listened to Dr. Uh, Ricky Ott, and she told you that these uh, chemicals can hurt you for years, years past um, by breathing them in. What do you think about what you heard? Actually, it's the truth because it's been over a year. My, me and my husband, we've uh, both are st still not feeling well. We're still tired all the time, and my husband's been having headaches every day. Oh, I've got numbness in my legs. I can hardly walk, can't sleep at night. I've got a bad headache. 
and I've been dizzy. Because I had a, a severe breathing problem after that oil spill because I worked right next to the Kalamazoo River. Okay, tell me more. And I went to the hospital several times and I'm still having, you know, like lung problems. And you live right uh, next to the oil spill, is that correct? That's correct. And uh, did Embridge ever evacuate you? No. Did they ever offer you anything? Yes. What did they offer you? $250. $250. Now, didn't you get sick from this? Yes, I got sicker, yes. And did you go to the hospital and your, see your doctor about it? Yes. And what did your doctor say? She said that's where it came from, the smell. It affected my asthma real bad. And then they had to put me on oxygen. So you had to go on oxygen afterwards? Yes. Every one of us here in this park are on fixed income. And we think they think we're after their money, but we're not. We have, I want them to make it right. Put people where they're where they can breathe, where they can have a healthy life. What kind of quality life am I going to have on oxygen? You know, I'm 48 years old. I shouldn't be like that now. No, no, the specialist told me with the chemicals that are in the oil. I'm lucky if I see my 50th birthday. My personal opinion, I never had this problem until that spill. When I get a sudden burning in my throat, I get the worst case of heartburn in the world. Never had it in my life. Never. Were you ever sick? Yes. Can you tell me what your symptoms were? Severe headaches, nausea, fatigue, forgetfulness, all of it. Did you ever have any sores or um, was it hard to breathe? Yeah. Yeah, it was hard to breathe. You, have, you find yourself gasping for air sometimes. I'm very upset. I think that they took advantage of us. They didn't educate us correctly. And I think they should, they should take whatever we can dish out to them. I feel bad because they breathe these chemicals in and yeah. it does, it can cause leukemia and cancer and, and see, stuff. And I don't know what all the symptoms of it are. I mean, him alone, he's had 12 ear infections in 15 months. Wow. Uh, we've been battling for quite a while now. Um, respiratory problems, he's been on nebulizer treatments That's since huge. he was a baby. Um, yeah. You know, they're saying he's and pretty asthmatic, and I don't know if that... Well, it happened you know, right after the oil spill, right? Yeah, not long after, yeah, because he was only, he was born in May, and it happened in August, so he was only a couple months old. Um, she was, her side of her face was smushed. Um, her right eye was very puffy, and it looked like she had a black eye, and her jaws completely offset, and one of her nostrils was closed. And um, you were pregnant during the oil spill, is that correct? Yes. After the oil spill, you had a miscarriage? Yes. And you said it was? It was bad. I almost ended up dying. My liver, spleen, pancreas, uterus, and gallbladder had gotten infected. And the hospital told me if I had gotten there six hours later, I probably would have been dead. I've heard rumors that other people have lost their kids due to the oil spill, too. Jim, why are you here today? Um, my six-year-old son is in treatment for leukemia. Okay, and, can you uh, tell me about when your son got leukemia? My son was diagnosed officially on March 8th, 2012. He uh, started showing symptoms in late January of 2012. So he got leukemia after the oil spill? Yes. Well, I think, yeah, I think it's possible that we could have dozens of leukemia cases because of the oil spill because of the benzene exposure. There's like 900 students in the whole school. I've seen five different names of kids, elementary school level and junior high level, that they were talking about how they had leukemia. What were you like before the oil spill happened? I, I used to be able to just go down by the river, see all, all the ducks. They were, they were clean, they'd be all over the place. And now none of them are out. The water's all black. All of these exercises in the gym that I'm can't, I just can't do because of the oil spill. Before the oil spill, I've never had the migraines, headaches, or dizzy spells. Since then, um, they, I get them all the time with migraines, and I get dizzy, just not even doing anything. 
sorry. It's just, it's been really hard. I'm really active. I can't even go out and do half the things that I don't want to do anymore. I can't ride my bike. Um, you can't get insurance because you're sick. I'm trying to get my medications is hard enough trying to do that because I can't breathe. I got to do four treatments a day. A puffer. I mean, I can't even go outside and enjoy the weather if it's too humid. I can't handle the cold. Um, it's, it's just terrible that they don't even care about us. My throat has been burning since 2010. My doctor has no idea why. I have no tonsils, so it's not tonsillitis. I don't have strep throat. I have earaches. I have to take Topamax to get rid of my headaches. I've never had that in my entire life. I have been healthy my whole life. Never had to go to doctors. I've got to scrape money back up just to go to the doctors. I mean, it, this is ridiculous. They don't even care about us. You're about the only person I have seen on, t on, on YouTube or any on television that even gives a damn about us. There's nobody that gives anybody but you. That's about all only one I've seen. We spent a total of 16 days displaced from our home, and our home reeked, reeked of oil. Um, we we had to get rid of clothes. We had to get rid of furniture. We had to get rid of curtains. We had to get rid of things that were just just permeated with this smell, and we couldn't breathe. My husband has COPD now. Um, I was having headaches uncontrollably, just burning in my eyes, just all around my temple, all around every area of my head, down my neck. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't even know what to think, what our outcome was going to be, and we still have no justice. I know five people in this neighborhood, within this single block right here, has COPD. And <clears throat> I never had COPD before. So I think the oil spill might have had something to do with that. I lost an uncle due to lung problems. You believe it's because of the oil spill? Absolutely. I was just diagnosed with emphysema. They said I had the lungs of an 83-year-old man. And you were fine before that? And I was fine before that. I'm sorry, but the, they polluted the water. They polluted the land. They ruined it. This, this this is why this whole town is going bare. Look at all the empty houses. We knew all these people. Now it's just like, you know, you can go, oh, so-and-so's gone. That person's gone. They're empty houses. And it shouldn't be like that. What's it feel like when someone passes away and you believe they got cancer from the oil spill? How do you feel inside? Angry. Very angry. I just like to go up to the suckers that came here and did their little ya ya cheer for Embridge routine. I like to really slap them up and say, stop your stupid lying and tell the truth. Fumes cause you to get nauseous and have extremely bad headaches. And I had headaches for about two weeks, which caused me to repeatedly vomit and throw up over and over and over again. It basically would never go away for about two weeks. And I actually puked so hard, I detached my aorta off my stomach. I had three pints of blood that built up into my stomach to where I almost bled to death as a result of it. Why do you think that happened? Oh, I know it's from the fumes of the oil spill. Basically what happened is, is daily I had to breathe the fumes and uh, the ABC News and the Channel 3 News and all of them basically said it's just, you know, fumes, you'll be okay. You might have a little headaches, a little nausea, but you'll be okay. Well, I wasn't okay. And they lied to everybody. It's like three weeks of just puking in a buck and migraine headaches and sick as a dog. Just like a dog who couldn't eat. It was just nasty. Just kept, had to keep everything in the house closed up and trying to like burn incense and stuff to try to kill the smell. And but it just went right through your house. It didn't matter. You could just it just hell. They were smelling it all the way up to the other side of like a mile away. Well, if I said what I wanted to, I want you to take say it. To court. They had to shoot them. Hang the son of a bitches. That's all. There's nothing wrong with saying it because you haven't said a name. You're saying a company. <laughs> well, 
What company are you so mad at? Enbridge themselves. I don't understand. Everybody thinks Enbridge says that they're doing a great job. Yeah, they're doing a great job at covering up. It has actually killed over 14 fucking people here. Do I think people are faking being sick? I don't see how you can fake dying. I mean, I don't, you're not going to fake that. And I, I mean, I know I'm not faking my headaches, and I don't know if it's caused from the oil spill or what it was caused from, but I know I've never had them until in the last couple of years. After the oil spill. After the oil spill. Uh, I was fine before the spill, and like after the spill, I started having headaches, migraine headaches, uh, nausea, vomiting, sometimes diarrhea. You know, it was just all, everything at, uh, while I was at work. This was going on, and then I would notice after I'd go home, I would there was times where I was falling down and hurting myself, just you know, out of the blue and. Um, breathing problems. I had a couple episodes where I couldn't breathe at all and uh, after all these things going on and going to the doctors you know I have a tumor in my spine and they found multiple system in both my lungs. It sucks. My, my boy died from different causes we think you know uh, seizures. He started having seizures uh, last December. Last uh, November or December. And he died of a seizure in the house three days before she died from cancer. All right. Yeah, I got two in one week at Christmas. And I was taken various times to the hospital where I would have a seizure that was so violent that it took sometimes four people to hold me down. I had uh, three seizures at the other house and two seizures where I live now. So Enbridge told you and your daughter that these chemicals will not hurt you? Yeah, and that nobody in the community was going to be hurt or impacted by that. They were cleaning up the river. Yes, I got migraines. I had a seizure for the first time in my life. You had a seizure after the oil spill, the first time in your life? Yes. Um, and then my son actually had a... Uh, an episode where he looked like he was having seizures, passing out. I even took him to the ER and... It's almost over. It's almost over. It's almost over. It's almost over. It's okay. It's okay. It's almost over. It's almost over. It's almost over. Can you grab a bag of keys? Trace? This is why we have to stop Enbridge and these oil companies from doing this. They're having seizures and they're, they're getting sick from this tar sand oil. Please help us. That shit had something to do with this. I don't care what they say, I still look at those. And why do you think that dress you? So I never had no troubles until then. You got all them videos to prove it. This is the Kalamazoo River, November 5th, 2013. We're 21 miles away from where the spill happened in Marshall, Michigan. Um, but this is what they're telling people right here. Eat safe fish from the Kalamazoo River. Fish are part of a healthy diet. They're still acting, I'm still in the fight. The lawyer said, wait, I got it. That's oil right that's there. That's oil right one. there. Yeah, that's what? a good one. Huh? We actually did. Damn, I didn't see that. It's I mean, come on, that's all oil. That's yeah. not how they look. No, they're usually pretty white. Yeah, they're, they're pretty. pretty. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna show you the difference between a good fish and a contaminated fish. If you look down here, right here, that's a good fish. This here is contaminated, full of oil. All through there, you can see how it's completely black. Then here we have a catfish. It's got a tumor right in over here. Oil spots everywhere. 
and it's got tumors back here if you can come over on this side here. Can you just flip them maybe? Yeah. Right there, oh, you yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So who's eating them? Who's Nobody eating those down. delicious fish? Nobody, Nobody now. I would have been. I would have been if I wouldn't have seen that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'd have still been eating them to this day because they said it was okay for us to eat. Bullshit. Not seeing shit like that. Now looking at a rock bass that's clean and one that's actually dirty. What's your opinion about the media uh, with the Battle Creek spell? What media? I mean, it's they've totally neglected the whole reporting of it. I don't think they're being honest about it. I don't think that they're caring enough. They're not doing any research. They're not coming out. No media's come to talk to anyone around my neighborhood that I know of. And we're right at the river. So I don't think the media is interested in, in us. I don't think they're interested in putting the story out there. I don't know. I don't know why not. I don't know. Well, what I, what I do know is the local newspaper, Battle Creek Inquirer, shame on them. Right after the oil spill, all along the ground here, there were dead birds. Tell me about that. Well, it, it just was a sickening smell. We had a little dog that he started vomiting. We had at the time about 50 chickens, and I lost 30 of them in the first two days. When the representatives from Enbridge come around, I ask him if he should be moved if he was too close to the river. Oh, no, he wasn't too close. He wasn't too close. Well, he just kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker. and. We took him to the vet, and he just kept getting bigger and bigger, and he ended up with brain cancer. After $3,000 in vet bills, we ended up having to put him down. They couldn't save him. And this happened right after the oil spill? Right after the oil spill, within two months after the oil spill. And I moved here just so I could have access to this water, but I can't fish here anymore or swim in here anymore. I'm they destroyed it. <laughs> it's ruined. Well, when they say it's clean, do you believe them? Absolutely not. <laughs> they wouldn't be back to clean it up some more if it's not. They still have all these markers. There's one right there. <laughs> They're there for a reason. Enbridge is obviously still cleaning up this river that didn't have, you know, anything in it. You know, according to them, everything was safe and clean. Um, we're still not drinking our, our water. Um, it's been four years. Yeah, they got sick enough I had to put down my four cats, you know, which was a couple kittens, you know, I mean, young, you know, two, three months really old. And I had to put down two of my dogs that we had had for years. I don't know. I've, I've had two dogs that died this last summer. You had? Menards. Well, we've had a lot of people that had their animals die. Um, did did he, they start losing hair on the, their spine, right up on their back? I lost hair, and well, I kept changing the water twice a day because you get like oil foam, like it's got down here, and no water. Wait a minute, their their dishes up here, four houses away, you would get oil film yep. in the dishes, floating in the air, because it set, settled in the water, looked like gas floating in it. Tumor? Yeah. Right there's the tumor. And once they said the spill was cleaned up already, uh, I let her swim and drink and everything uh, out of the river like she always did before. And now we have this massive tumor on her chest. Oh my God. Vet, All that can, vet says they can't do anything about it because uh, she probably won't be able to come out of the anesthesia. Look at how much they're digging out. They buried all this oil, and now because of my videos, they're redigging it out. So I would say absolutely, you and all the all of the people that have actually supported you along the journey um, have a big part to play in causing them to now come back and get this thing right. You know, so that also lets me know that if it was clean to begin with, then why are you being asked to come back and clean it again? Right. If it was clean as you suppose, you know. And so hopefully, hopefully the public now is at a place where they now understand that, okay, John was telling the doggone truth. I'm with Channel 3 News, brought him out here, Thomas Creek, showing them all the oil that they're redigging up. Look at all these supervisors. All they do is stand around all day doing nothing. Think of the money that's wasted.
fun to show you. I'm five foot ten, and this is deeper than me. That's how much oil was buried and now being re-dug up. Can you show the creek? I mean, all through here. A Michigan man is on a mission in Arkansas urging people affected by oil spills to demand oil companies come clean with neighbors. KRK Force Dustin Barnes spoke to this whistleblower in Mayflower where some families are really still grappling with the fact they may never move back into their homes. Dustin. That's right, Brittany. John Bolenbaugh has lived through an oil spill. In fact, he was part of the cleanup crew sent to clean up after a pipeline rupture that spilled into the Kalamazoo River back in 2010. He tells me he was fired from that job because he spoke out against the oil company's deceiving practices. I've been traveling all over. When John Bolenbaugh goes to a town, he wants everyone to know he's there. The victims of the oil spill, and yes, even the oil companies responsible for it. I don't care what they say. Bolenbaugh talks to some of the Mayflower families displaced by the oil spill, and even those who live near the site who say they're affected by it. These chemicals that you breathe in, some of them say that it takes an entire year before you'll even see signs. He tells neighbors not to believe everything ExxonMobil says either. He warns them not to be fooled by money. Several Mayflower residents have gotten cash for the company's inconvenience. They don't open a clinic for the sick people or the people that will get sick. They won't ever spend money that way because they don't want nobody to know about that. Res Bolenbaugh hopes his message stops the covering up but exposes so these folks can live in peace again. Arkansas newspaper, May 15, 2013. Wow, this is gorgeous. The only problem is it's full of oil. Now, Exxon said that they stopped it over here on the other side of Lake Conway. Now, we're going to see if Exxon's lying to us, okay? Look at that. This is what's in Lake Conway. It's in the mud, people. I've been trying to pe teach people for years. Prove that's oil. I'm gonna put mud on my hands. Okay. The mud will come off, but look, the oil doesn't. It's under the water. Now listen, this is in the area that they're not cleaning anymore. Do you see any boom? They're done cleaning. Are you guys done with this area? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. There's, there's no line, so I just want to make sure. Does this look done to you? I'm being followed and 
her ass, just waiting for them to pull me over. Will you talk to me, sir? Will you talk to me, sir? Roll down your window, please. I need your help. I need advice. Roll down your window, officer. Do you work for the state of Arkansas? You have to roll down your window. I am asking for advice. So you work for Exxon instead. Are you working for Exxon? He's shaking his head, he works for Exxon. If you pull me over and harass me, I will sue you. I will sue you. If you, listen, if you work for Exxon, I have a right to sue you individually. If you pull me over or harass me, I've already contacted the attorney general. Don't, don't you dare harass me. I will file a lawsuit against you, personally. Go. Leave me alone and stop harassing me. If you won't talk to me, don't harass me. Have you ever seen that? Were you standing a foot away from an officer's door asking for him to talk to you, asking for, for advice and help? on your situation and they refuse to roll their window down. Have you ever heard of that? Um, I have a feeling I'm going to be harassed and probably pulled over in the near future for no reason um, just to try to scare me. You guys don't trust me or what? I'm just doing our job. What's, what is your job? Drone and pick. Yes sir. Is it to harass? Yeah. It may be to a point or something like that. You, you did not do this alone. You're not by yourself anymore. You got people down here in Arkansas that we're going through the same kind of crap and we're gonna network with you, John, and you're not alone anymore. There's more of us, of, the, of us than there are of them. You're blazing a trail here, okay? You're doing something nobody else wants to do. You're the trailblazer here and we're standing behind you and we are with you, whether you're in Michigan Wherever you're at, we're behind you. Uh, people like me, and people are gonna people are gonna come out of the woodwork, John. I, I do believe, and they're gonna throw in their support with you because you're doing the righteous work. There's nothing like a nice day in the hot tub right next to your tar sand and bridge pipeline. Why do you and your wife argue about this? Just because it causes a lot of stress for me and it causes a lot of tension and I'm angry about it and she doesn't see it, comes home and we argue because I'm under the stress of listening to this all day long. I mean, I could leave, but at the same time, I've got the risk of all this dirt crumbling away from our house and our whole foundation's exposed. That's how close they are. Then I'm just trying to stay the course and try to stay sane through all this. I mean, you're seeing a couple minutes of this on video, but this has been six months of this, and it's hard to explain to people how this affects you every day. About 30% of the oil spills are actually reported because most of them are just said that they're maintenance. Um, they actually profit when there's oil spills. They want oil spills. For five years they knew there was a crack in it. They shut it down to fix it, then they lose eight million dollars a day. So what they do is they just squeeze out that revenue for the next five years until it does spill, and then that insurance company hires them to clean up their own mess. The insurance company pays for lost revenue, they pay to fix the pipe. The oil company owns the cleanup materials, they own the cleanup companies, and they actually will buy the land in the local areas, and then they actually will sell it for more than what it's worth. But during that time they're cleaning up a spill or building a pipeline or whatever they're doing, they actually put their workers in those homes, and now the workers pay rent instead of the um, hotels um, being paid for by the oil company. So now there's another course of revenue, plus they raise the gas prices. So they profit three or four times more by having an oil spill um, than what they do if they fix the pipe. 
there is 100,000 gallons of oil that the EPA says they can never clean out of the Kalamazoo River. This is a national security threat. If there is an oil spill in the Great Lakes or somebody blows it up, we lose most of the fresh water in the United States in one day. But Talmadge Creek, they said it was clean. They planted grass over it. They landscaped it. They told, I was at a meeting where they had, just like you guys, and said, it is clean. And it was very full of oil, so much. And I even got arrested going out there and videotaping them dig up the buried oil. I, this is sick of what is going on with our public people that are paid, that are helping these oil companies pollute our land. You cannot weld this pipe properly. I just had an Enbridge inspector on video specifically say that they use cheap steel and it always leaks. There is always leaks from these pipelines. No alarm will go off unless one and a half percent of pressure is lost. You won't know it's leaking. I won't know it's leaking. Nobody will. It will leak into our water system. Five gallons here, 100 gallons here, 50 gallons here. They're going to lie to you any chance they get. Money, this is billions and trillions of dollars. They're, they don't care about you. They don't care about me. And they can never clean these oil spills up, ever. There's water right now. I can go out there right now soon as it's warm out, and I can prove I can fill my gloves up with oil, and you guys say that it's okay for kids to swim in there, and it's okay for people to eat the tumored fish that we're pulling out of the river. It sickens me that money is more important than your children and your grandchildren. I have two little girls now, and before I had those girls, they're one and two. I was fighting for you and your kids, and now I'm fighting for my kids. And someday this is going to spill and it's going to be on you. And you're going to die someday and your kids and grandkids are going to know that you made the decision to pollute the largest freshwater source in the United States and the world. All it does is hurt the environment. And last time I checked, there's only one world. There's only one Earth. And once we screw that up, we're all done. We can't make another one. They're, they're, you know, they're not making another Earth. They're not making another planet for us to go to. So if they want to keep screwing it up, keep screwing it up, all it's going to do is hurt our children's children's children. And maybe they can sleep at night. I can't sleep with myself at night knowing that I screwed up our planet. Why do they want to keep me away from the river? Because they don't want whistleblowers. They, they, they don't want nobody to know what they're doing or what they're not doing or what they should be doing and they're not doing. They just they don't want people to know. They want to basically try to sweep it under the rug and, you know, forget about it. Because they don't care.
Um, so we got a video, it was live stream. Uh, we saw that the Chicagoan camp is being attacked. They're spraying water on everybody, which is actually freezing everybody. It's so cold out. I don't know how our government can do this to these people. Everybody's gonna see how disgraceful you are. They're on this side of the barbed wire. They cannot hurt you. If you shoot them, you are a coward. Give up your badge. Dude, are you all right? Come on, stop. He's down. Hey, stop. Stop that right now. Please stop. Think about it. Look at what you're doing. kids are going to know what you've done. Go ahead and ignore the cameras. But I saw you documenting. See those cameras right there? Binoculars? They're mercenaries. They're hired by these oil companies to harass Indians and to beat them down and the sick dogs after them. Shame on you. As I said, I used to work for them. I'm, I'm disgraced that I used to work for them. This man is a whistleblower. He gave up his job to expose the oil that was being hidden. Please honor him. He's a veteran. He's given six years of his life to protect us and to come here all the way from Oklahoma, leaving his little kids and his wife so that he could expose and help our nations, all our nations, all our traditions, all our races, all our genders, so all of us and our children can live. I want to sing a, an honoring song for him. Come to my meeting and I'll teach you a little bit about stuff that you need to know to tell your kids about and your grandkids. God bless you. Oh, thank you so much, John. I appreciate all you. And basically, helping.org is fighting for our water. It's investigating the truth. It's exposing the truth with video proof. This isn't about John Bolenbaugh. This is about you and you and you, all of you that are here today. This is about all of you. And th that's what I'm fighting for. That's why I'm risking my life for this. One of the times in your life where you gotta make a decision. And my decision is, go ahead, Enbridge. 
Charge me with trespassing. Throw me in jail. But I'm not going away. I'll be here next year. And I'll be helping my community even more. Forty miles of dead fish in the river. I just can't turn a blinded eye. I see the people out there dying. And they don't know the reason why. Retaliation's getting bolder. Got me looking over my shoulder. They never ever roll me over. I was born to be the whistleblower. Just like the Superman, I will not be born. I come at you with everything that I got From Kalamazoo all the way to Standing Rock I'm ashamed the way they betray us We can't stand idle anymore They're attacking exactly what we are There's blackened waves upon the shore I stand me deep in northern tar Retaliation's getting bolder Got me looking over my shoulder They never ever roll me over I was born to be the whistleblower Washte, greetings. My name is Dr. Maria Michael. I'm a Lakota Navajo elder. And I come to you on this day, on New Year's Eve, as we transition from 2016 to 2017, and ask that you join us in prayer for John Bolenbaugh. Everything has to come together now. We need to create a new paradigm, a new shift on this planet where money and greed do not own everything, where love and peace prevail, and that humanity is brought back into our realm of thinking as spiritual warriors to treat each other with kindness and compassion and love. We are one family, and that may we may all embrace John in the work that he's doing, support him with donations, support his website, support his documentary, help support him because he's not working and he's doing this all from his own money. We all need to support him from every direction so that he can not only continue to live and so that his wife and children are blessed, but so that we're blessed with the gifts of what he's trying to do. We want to show you something that from one of the actions at Standing Rock. And this is what it's about. This is what John's video is about. It's about water is life. We can't replace the water if we ruin all of it. We can't replace the water in our bodies with oil. It doesn't work. It kills us. We cannot take the water from the world and all living beings. It is our job in 2017 to protect the waters, to protect our grandmother Earth, to protect our planet. We only have one.